elaborate office building of the Allied Magazine Syndicate, three entire floors are devoted to the highly successful Home Life Magazine. At the head of this minor empire is Home Life's efficient editor, Miss Linda Gilbert. May I come in, Madam Editor? Carrie, it's you. You're back. Hello. And a great big enthusiastic hello to you, too. How have you been, Linda? Reasonably well, considering I haven't had you around for the past three years. Been that long, huh? Last time I saw you, we had lunch at Marcel's, August 12th, 1950. We were supposed to dine at Caesar's, only you went to Berlin instead. I might have known you'd remember. By the way, our date is off, isn't it? When I didn't hear from you for three years, I leaped to that conclusion. You heal. Oh, now, don't be like that. You're right. You're, you're really not a heel. You just give that impression. What do you want? Can I just stop in and say hello without, uh, without being suspected? You're being charming, reasonable, and very boyish. Unless you've changed, that means you're about to drink somebody's blood, probably mine. I, uh, I've just been up to see the boss. He fired me. Oh, really? And here I was thinking he couldn't read. <laughs> you're sweet. Anyway, he hired me back again. He can't read. You, uh, do you know who my new editor is? No, who? You. Oh, no, no, he wouldn't do that to me. He's already done it. No. I'm assigned to the Home Life in America series. Over my It dick. isn't very flattering, you know. After all, I'm still pretty handy with a typewriter. I'm gay, lovable, nice teeth. Uh, what more do you want? I'll be as tactful as possible, Carrie. I don't want you around. Grudge, nurse. Nothing personal. You're a fine fellow, but I, I won't have you on the magazine. But why not? You're a foreign correspondent. You're used to exciting, important stories thing that happens to the people we write about is a, is a five-dollar raise for Pa. You'd be utterly bored. You'd start making fun of them, and it just wouldn't work out. Well, at least couldn't we talk about it? After all, I... Hey, now, no, no, wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to dinner. Got a date? No. Well, then have dinner with me, huh? The one we missed three years ago. I'm glad I didn't wait. We can have dinner at Caesar's. Uh, they don't know my credit's no good there. <laughs> Caesar's has gotten frightfully expensive. No? Well, uh, sure ones, then. Only be about five bucks for the two of us, uh... You can afford that much, can't you? Now, look, Carrie. What are you so suspicious about? We'll have dinner, and then I'll take you home. Yes, early, too. I have a very busy day tomorrow. I'm going to Indiana. Oh, yeah, Indiana. My first assignment, huh? You? Indiana? Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I had a lovely time, Carrie. Lovely Lovely. It was lovely. Lovely. Now, uh, let me come in, huh? I'm so sorry. You see, I have to get up early in the morning. Good night. Well, oh, good night. I can only stay a minute. <laughs> You're so right. I, I like this, Linda. This is nice. Here we are, picking up things just where we left off. You know... Now, we're not picking anything up. Not one single bygone is going to be a bygone as far as I'm concerned. Stop turning the lights out. Look, if you're still sore about me walking out on us three years ago, I can explain I'm that. I'm definitely not interested. Much. You were pretty ambitious in those days, Linda. I still am. You knew exactly what you wanted, where you were going, how to get there. I sound like a subway. Stop <laughs> creeping up on me. Hmm? No. Well, anyway, that day I left you after we had lunch together, well, I started looking in store windows. Suddenly I had a terrible realization. That you'd forgotten to borrow taxi fare from me. No. No. No, I found myself looking at furniture. Household furniture. Bedroom suites. Two dollars down. One thousand five hundred and sixty-seven weeks to pay. For the first time in my life, I wanted to get married. It bowled me over. I just stood there, paralyzed. Then what? I hopped the first plane to Germany. I just couldn't live the way you do, Linda. Tied down, everything all planned out. You know, even when I was making love to you, I had the feeling that you were wondering what time it was. Well, that's not the sweetest thing anyone's ever said to me. Yes, I, I suppose you were terribly angry. Oh, I got over it. Oh, you did? Completely? Uh, Carrie, there's one thing that obviously never occurred to you. I don't think I would have married you. Linda, I'm amazed. You came back expecting to find a broken butterfly quivering in the void of your absence, didn't you? Yes. Yes, Linda, I did. You're right. This isn't at all what I expected. But, you know, it's, it's nicer this way. Kind of like old times. Just the two of us sitting here talking. We always did talk a lot. 
We talked away everything that ever meant anything to us. No. No, not everything, Linda. Not every... Ow! Now stop it. You're smooth and charming. You turn it on like hot water from a faucet. But I had measles once, and now I'm immune. I always know what time it is now, Carrie. 11.20. I have to get up early. Well, Carrie, you dear gullible boy, you just struck out. Oh, Linda, look, we know each other too well for all this. We we still go for each other, and you know it. I only know that you, you're very casual about these things, and I'm not. I'd wake up one morning and find myself in Afghanistan. Linda. Well, all right, I'll go. Quietly and sadly into the night went fun-loving Carrie Jackson, the schmo of the week. So, uh, I almost forgot, the job on the magazine. Do I get it? Yes. Goody, goody. On certain conditions. I'm editor. I'm running Home Life magazine, and that means that you'll have to take orders from me. Well, a pleasure, and boss. You will have to forget I'm a woman. Mm-hmm. I will try. Linda Gilman is not a woman. Linda Gilman is not a woman. Oh, here. Have a cigar. <laughs> Thanks. I'll smoke it after breakfast. I'll see you in the office, Carrie. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Grab chairs and let's get going. Oh, good morning, Carrie. Good morning, sir. (laughs) Met everyone? Oh, yes, yes. They all wanted to know how I got mixed up in a business like this. And what did you tell them? Just lucky, I guess. Oh, how nice. Now, you know our story concerns the Brinker family in Crestville, Indiana. Two young girls, usual number of parents. What's the old man do, Linda? Mr. Brinker owns a hardware store. The house, incidentally, is is a museum piece, (laughs) and so is Mrs. Brinker. Uh, Paula, you'll have to put her on a strict diet. Don't I always? Well, just to satisfy my curiosity, how did Home Life magazine happen to pick this particular couple? Well, the eldest daughter is is being married anyway, and she happens to fit into our schedule. Her name is Jean. She understands we have a deadline, and while it is the middle of winter, she knows we're working on our June issue right now, so she's willing to get married right away for us. Now, Paula, you see that their clothes are brought up to date, use light summary materials, and Rosemary, you, you make out the usual household budget and weekly menu and keep them simple, and, okay. and Scotty, the usual pictures. Got it. Uh, what about me? Uh, this will be a 19-page feature, Carrie, about 5,000 words. Now, we'll call the feature June Bride. June Bride? Isn't that a little daring? Just remember, this is a typical small-town family, and they'll have to live with the house and the clothes and the neighbors after we've gone. I've had the local carpenter and the painter and the upholsterer working in the house for the past two weeks. Mrs. Brinker expects us tomorrow. She's going to bake a cake. Oh, no. Remember, it's winter, and we have to do a June wedding in less than a week. Any questions? Oh, well, not for me. Very well, that's all for now. Okay, well, I might... Oh, Carrie. Yeah? Uh, you and I are flying out this afternoon. We are. Yes, there's four feet of snow in Crestville. You uh, better wear your long ease. Oh, now, look here, Linda. Of all the corny you ideas... Tell me all on the plane. We're leaving at one ten. Yes, sir. Well, at least I have a rough idea of what we'll do to the Brinker house. Yeah, I wish I had a rough idea of what I was going to use for a story. But you have your story. Nineteen-year-old girl marries boy next door. It's America's best. You're really getting folksy, aren't you? <laughs> Next thing I know, you'll be crocheting and putting up pickled cucumber pits. Now, listen, you stop sneering in that superior way of yours at all the important things in life. Who's sneering? I see two children in the family, huh? Jean, age 19, and Boo, age 17. Boo? It's short for Barbara. Oh. Jean couldn't pronounce Barbara when they were babies. She called her Booba, and it stuck. Oh, I see. Uh, what are these harpies like? Oh, Jean's very pretty, very. Well, why didn't you say so? Wipe off your chin, dear. The groom plays football. No. Oh. You can work that into your story, too. What story? The only way I'll get a story is to have typical Mr. Brinker beat typical Mrs. Brinker to death with a typical meat axe. <laughs> Be reasonable, and I've got to find a gimmick. You've got your gimmick. A June bride. Hey, uh, maybe there's insanity in the family. Uh, an uncle or something. Now, listen, Carrie. I'm very serious about this. I won't stand for any hoax. You're going to write a straight young love story. No twists, no angles, and no drama. I am. And you're going to be very nice to the Brinkers. Mm. No little jokes at their expense. Yeah. Carrie, please be, be charming. Okay. Thank you. Well, 
Well, here's the house. Oh, oh, Aunt Carrie, listen. Um, you will have to learn about Indiana people. They don't talk a great deal unless it's important. Yeah, I know why. They're afraid if they open their mouths, they'll freeze their teeth. <laughs> I'm so cold, I could... Shh, be quiet. Hmm? Someone's coming. I hope it's a St. Bernard with a castle. Yes? <laughs> it is a St. Bernard. <laughs> well, my dear Mrs. Brinker, I'd know you anywhere. It's so very nice to see you. And uh, how are the children, Mrs. Brinker? Hmm. Hmm. I guess I wasn't charming enough, huh? Oh, yes, dear. You were very charming. There was only one little thing the matter. That wasn't Mrs. Brinker. Did someone come in? Oh, hello. Oh, Miss Gilman. I'll be right down. Don't feel anything. Uh, who's that? It sounds like Boo. Come on. We'll wait in the living room. Yeah. Now, what's that? This is a living room? Well, it's a, it's a purple horror, all right, but we'll do something with it. Yeah, you can set fire to it in several places. No, 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 it won't be half bad when we get rid of some of the, the knickknacks and we cut away that scroll work. Do you mean to tell me you can do something with this funeral oh, problem? you'll be surprised. Now, why the sardonic smirk? Oh, I wasn't smirking. I'm just looking at you with new respect. Why? Because I know my business? Frankly, I thought you'd be out of place in Indiana. Now I can even imagine you churning a tub of butter. How am I doing? Well, your hair's in your eyes, but you you look wonderful. Linda... Uh, the I... dining room's in here. Uh, you see that, um, that uh, plate rack on the wall? How can you talk about plate racks when I'm feeling so affectionate? You must be thawing out. Linda, we're going to be here for a whole week, and, well, I have what I think is a wonderful idea. And it starts out like this, with a kiss. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's do that again, huh? I have a better idea. Go to the hotel and take a nice cold shower. I give up. Oh, no, don't give up. It's very interesting. Nobody makes love like that in Indiana. Or anywhere else. Hello, Boo, dear. How nice to see you again. This is Carrie Jackson, our feature writer. Hello. Now, don't get too near him, Boo. He wants to ju judo. Mother and Jean will be right down. We didn't expect you so soon. Uh, who was that same but not... Um, that uh, lady who let us in. It must have been Mrs. Lace from next door. She's helping us with the curtains. Daddy, they're here. They are? Well, hello, folks. This is Mr. Jackson, Father. He's awfully nice for an older man. Uh, just call me Gramps. <laughs> well, glad to know you, Mr. Jackson, I'm sure. Well, here's Mrs. Brinker now. Oh, hello, Miss Gilman. Hello, Mrs. Brinker and Jean. I'd like you to meet our feature writer, Carrie Jackson. Carrie, Mrs. Brinker, and Jean. Well, Mrs. Brinker, it's so nice to see you. I'd know you anywhere. I've, I've heard so much about you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this, of course, is Jean. Hello. Yes, you certainly are. Oh, I think it's all terribly exciting. All of you people coming all the way to Indiana just for my little old wedding. Oh, well, we wouldn't miss your little old wedding for a little old million dollars. <laughs> I, uh, I wish you'd tell us more about how you go about this kind of story. You told me a lot the last time, Miss Gilman, but since then, the relatives... Well, <laughs> I was wondering if we really should go through with oh, it. Why, Mrs. Brinker, you'll be famous, absolutely famous. Now, let's go upstairs and have a chat, shall we? I'd like to wash up. We're all invited out for supper, Miss Gilman. Some of the neighbors are giving a barn dance and stage dance. Well, that's wonderful. Yes, yes, that, that, that's great. <laughs> well, I guess this is sort of an occasion. Are you, um... Are you a temperance man, Mr. Jackson? Am I a temperance? Oh! <laughs> uh, Mr. Brigger, are you by any chance uh, asking me if I'll have a drink? <laughs> I'll go get it. <laughs> I have to keep it hid like I saw in the movies once. Mrs. Brinker's temperance. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's all right, Boo. Come on in. Oh, I, uh, I didn't think you saw me. Oh, I'm glad I did. I want to talk to you. Oh, what about? You. Boo, you're a very attractive young lady. You shouldn't let Jean push you out of sight the way she does. You're smart. Well, who am I to oppose the opinion of thousands? <laughs> <laughs> Boo, uh, those pictures on the mantelpiece, uh, family? Most of them. Mm -hmm. Tell me, uh... How are all your uncles? Fine. Oh, except Uncle Harry. We don't talk about him. Oh, a little soft in the head, maybe? Oh, no. He's a Democrat. <laughs> oh. Uh, who's that boy in the photograph there with you? Oh, that's Bud. Oh, the happy bridegroom, huh? Is he a nice guy? Wonderful. I gather Boo likes Bud. Uh-huh. 
What does he know? Wouldn't make any difference. Oh, now, you mustn't underestimate yourself. No, I just haven't got sock. Uh, what is sock? Bounce. Bounce? Hmm. I, I see. Well, I just haven't got any. Gene has. He used to make Jim awfully mad. Jim? He's Bud's brother. Oh. Well, uh, why should Jim care? Oh, my goodness, he and Gene were engaged once. They were engaged? Bud's brother and Gene? Well, what happened? Well, Jim stayed in the Army after the war. He's stationed in Chicago. Well, he doesn't get home very often, and... Well, I don't know. I, I guess Gene just likes attention. I see. So Gene took up with Bud, leaving Jim out in the cold, and uh, you too. And the wedding is only a few days off, and you'll all live unhappily ever after. Boy, what an angle. Angle? What would happen if Jim came home before the wedding? Oh, probably cause an awful lot of trouble. <laughs> it would, huh? But I'd like it. Yeah, you'd like it, and I'd have something to write about. Now, uh, let me see. I could call the public relations officer at Chicago and use the hallowed name of Home Life Magazine to get Jim, Jim ordered back here. And Let's see, what was the public relations officer's name? Uh, Lynn, Major Lynn, Major Howard Lynn. Yeah, and he could do it all right, too. Oh, that's wonderful. Let's call him right now, Mr. Jackson. Yeah. No, no, Boo. I, it's, it's a wonderful idea, but I, I can't do it. Forget it. Oh, but why? Now, that determined young lady upstairs would serve my head on a platter with an apple in my mouth. It probably would, would cause an awful lot of trouble, but even Mr. so... Hmm? I've got it. Oh. What's the matter with Father? Uh, will you excuse me? Your father and I are going to make some beautiful music. You better chew, chew a clove for an encore. Yeah, you better get upstairs. I will. But first, I've got a phone call to make. Operator. I want to make a long-distance call. I want to speak to Major Howard Lynn at the Army base in Chicago. One moment, please. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. John as Linda Gilman and Fred McMurray as Kerry Jackson. Well, it's a few minutes later. Miss Boo Brinker has completed her phone call to Chicago. And there, at an army base... You heard me, Mitchell. Those are orders. You mean I have to go, Major Lynn? Are you kidding? A week's furlough? Home? Uh, you don't understand, sir. My brother's getting married. Well? Uh, well, he's marrying my best girl. At least she was. Never mind. Home Life magazine wants you there. Report to a guy at the Brinker house named Carrie Jackson. Yes, and in the Brinker house... Only Boo knows that Jim is on his way home. Upstairs, Linda Gilman is chatting with the bride-to-be. While down in the pantry, Carrie Jackson is about to experience an unexpected sample of Indiana hospitality. I've got to keep this jug hid outside, Mr. Jackson. Mrs. Brink is very temperance. Keeps putting the cork back in. Oh? I, uh, I gather that makes a difference, Mr. Brinker? Well, it don't ferment if you keep the cork in. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, what is it? Cider. Apple cider. Apple cider. <laughs> you devil. <laughs> well, here you are, Mr. Jackson. Well, thanks. Uh, well, down the hatch. Yeah, down the dusty road, yes. <laughs> I don't suppose there's any cafe in town where we could maybe get something a little... Uh, <laughs> Holy smoke. Cider? <laughs> well, I guess it is a little strong. That, uh, that freezing don't leave much but pure alcohol. Oh, I, I, uh, I uh, don't light any matches around here, that's all. Uh, apples, huh? Just plain apples? Pippins. Pippins, huh? Well, I've bitten into many an apple, Mr. Brinker, but this is the first time I've ever had one bite back at me. <laughs> How about another little snort, eh? What do you say? Well, do you think I better? I, I guess I can't refuse. Uh, apples, huh? Just plain little old apples. Can I help you unpack or something, Miss Gilman? Mm. Oh, thank you. Tell me something, Jean. You happy? Oh, I guess I am. One thing's certain, I'm not going to be lonely anymore. Lonely? Oh, I was last summer. Nobody left in town. I'll say I was lonely. And then Bud came along. And I grabbed him. Now I'll ask you a question. Why aren't you married? Uh, well, mostly because um, I wasn't asked. 
Why didn't you ask him? Boo. Oh, now, really. Yes, Boo, now, really. You were listening in the hall again. It's the only way I ever get to hear anything. Well, I think I'll change. Did you press my red dress? I put it on your bed. Was it Mr. Jackson, the man you didn't ask? Now, who's interviewing who around here? Excited about the wedding, Boo? I think it's ghastly. You do? Why? I don't think I'll tell you. You're being very cryptic. Don't you like me? Oh, yes. Oh, very much. You're what I want to be, Miss Gilman. You're so, well, so sure of yourself. I am. And you're chic. Oh, but deaf. Well, it's for me. Well, I send away for the patterns. I make the dresses exactly the way they say, but something happens when I get through. Not chic? I guess it's just me. <laughs> well, <laughs> Carrie and your father seem to be getting along famously. <laughs> Miss Gilman, if you really wanted a man, what would you do? Well, I think I'd grab him, just like your sister. You would? But deaf. Well, uh, you better get ready for the barn dance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wonder what's going on down there. <laughs> I bet Pop froze it again. What? Huh? Oh, nothing. And thanks for a very interesting conversation. <laughs> well, I, I didn't understand it all, but I'm glad you did. <laughs> You're opening your eyes. Hmm? Oh, I... Uh, I've been thrown away. Feeling better? Hmm. Uh, where am I? What is all this? <laughs> We're in a sleigh. We're on our way home from a barn dance. Barn dance? You mean, you mean to tell me I've been to a barn dance? That you have. That you have. Hmm. He had a jug. Mr. Brinker had a jug. He, he claims the stuff is made out of apples. Just little old apples. <laughs> And time stood still. Yeah. I don't remember a thing. But more, I don't want to. Hey, uh, who are those giddy juveniles up front? Oh, they're going home from the barn dance, too. We are their chaperones. And this is where they all get off. All off, we're getting off. Well, if you won't get up, Carrie, I just want to blow you a kiss. Huh? And don't forget Friday. You promised, Carrie. I did? Well, well sure, sure. Uh, but who's that? Sally. Good night, honey. Oh, good night, honey. I, uh, I must have uh, had a wonderful time tonight. Yes, you did. Wonderful. Just what kind of a wonderful time did I have? Oh, wonderful. One by one, you promised every girl at the Crestville High to help her with her homework. Oh, no. It seems you're an expert on multiplication. And uh, then... Oh, well, then you went to sleep. Oh. Not a moment too soon. You look very nice when you're asleep, Carrie. Very young and innocent. It's astonishing. Hmm. You, you know, you're, uh, you're mellowing. I think I'll help you with your homework. No, Carrie. No, now, now stop it. Apparently, you've never walked home from a sleigh ride. I strongly advise against it. It's bitter cold, and those woods are teeming with wolves. All right, that settles it. I'm much too young to die, and... You're very comfortable. Oh, like an old shoe. I know your cheek's cold. It's getting warmer by the second. You know, I'm beginning to like Crestville. All of a sudden, I think I could settle down, too. I could get a job in New York, stay put. I could even grow roses on Sunday, if that's what you want. Could you really? No. <laughs> As for me, I guess I'd look pretty silly following you all over Europe. Carrying your suitcases, a respectable two paces behind, and speaking only when spoken to. Yeah. We have what I believe is referred to as a problem, don't we? Oh, let's not make it a problem, Carrie. Let's not even talk about it. Why not? You'd be heading for Berlin again, and oh, I'd miss you so. Linda. Ah. Linda Gilman is not a woman. Ha! Ah, oh, morning, Linda. How do you feel? Wonderful. Hmm. Hey, you're just in time. Uh, how do you spell idyllic? Ah, oh, never mind. Tell me. You want me to measure the curtains now? Oh, oh, no, no, Mrs. Lay. Why don't you do the living room first? Already did. Uh, we are making new drapes. Oh, oh, that's mm -hmm. nice, nice. How's the story going? It isn't. 
too many characters, I think. Uh, Mrs. Lace, are you sure you've got the right measurements for the living room curtains? All right, I'll measure them again. You can just call me when you're through smooching. <laughs> Mind if I read over your shoulder? No, yeah, not at all. You should read over my shoulder more often. <laughs> What's that? Oh, it's just Mrs. Brinker. Paula's trying to massage ten pounds off her. Paula has muscles like a stevedore. When did Paula get here? Oh, the whole staff arrived a few minutes ago. I, I wouldn't let them disturb you. Hey, Linda, where are you? I thought I was supposed to take some pictures. Well, I'll be with you in a minute, Scott. I give up, Linda. It just can't be done. So you but... don't want them to disturb me, <laughs> no, huh? Oh, well, I'm sorry, Carrie. All right, Rosemary, what can't be done? I'm supposed to teach Mrs. Brinker how to make a cheese souffle and other goodies, right? Well, that's the way we planned it, yeah. Hiya, Carrie. Hi. Have you seen that stove in there? That's not a stove. It's a locomotive boiler. And you don't need a cook, Linda. You need Casey Jones. Well, do the best you can. And when you finish in the kitchen, I want you to help me cut the living room sofa in half. Now, look, uh, how about sending Jean down here? I need some vital statistics, you know. I know, but Paula will do all the necessary measuring. Okay, I'm no good. I'll kill myself. Satisfied? Jean's taking a bath. Oh, then why don't I just run up there and get some... Oh, Carrie. See who's at the door, will you? I'll send the bride down when she's through. Say well, uh, who are you? Uh, who are you? Ah, uh, I asked first. Well, I'm Lieutenant Mitchell. I've got orders to report here to uh, Mr. Jackson. No. Oh. What did you say your name was? Jim Mitchell. I've got I'm orders. I'm sorry, to... nobody's home. Everybody's gone. But, uh... Boo! Boo, where are you? Boo! Boo, tap in with the wallpaper. Who's that at the door? Uh, go away. Smallpox. Uh, bu bu bubonic plague. They're all dead here. Ah! Oh, Paula's really been working her over. With what, a hacksaw? Who's that at the door? Uh, just a peddler. I, I told him we didn't want it. Peddler, that's an army officer. What's he selling? A uh, surplus airplane. Oh. <laughs> Open the door, Carrie. Okay. Well, who are you? I'm Jim Mitchell. I've got orders to report to a Mr. Jackson of Home Life Magazine. Well, this is Mr. Jackson. Well, how do you do? How do you do? Well, how do you do? You must be Bud's brother. I'm Linda Gilman. Oh, oh, this is wonderful. It is? The wedding would not be complete without you, Lieutenant. Linda, I... Uh, well, there's maybe something I uh, you ought to know. Uh, Your family uh, and the Brinkers make such uh, a Ms. delightful... Oh, Miss Gilman, uh, excuse me for interrupting, but I've been deliberately trying to avoid being home. It's about him and Jean. What about them? Jean. Well, hello. What are you doing here? I'm home. You are? Yeah. I thought you were still in Chicago. Oh, no? No, I... I'm home. Uh, they were engaged once. Harry? Now, look, Linda. I'll admit I had the idea at once, but I gave it up. I dropped it. I definitely. might have I thought know it anyway. you do something like that. Linda, I... We're going to do something about that sofa. I'll need a saw. You see the saw around Just here? Just a minute, Rosemary. Well, I hope you'll be very happy, Jean. I am already. I'm delighted to see that you're both intelligent young people. Oh, you needn't worry, Miss Gilman. I'm going to be very happy with Bud. He appreciates me. He wouldn't go off and leave me. Now, look, I've told you a thousand times. Well, if you I... think I'm going to wait until I'm practically an old maid to get married, you're very much mistaken. Well, now, that's the kind of nasty talk we like to hear. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Jackson, this is pretty rough. If you don't mind, I'd like to stay away until the wedding's over. Oh, good, good. Anything you want, old man, anything. So long, Miss Gilman. Goodbye, Jean. Well, <laughs> for a moment there, I thought we were in trouble about the story, I mean. <laughs> Well, no harm done, hmm? Oh. What's the matter with her? Nothing. She's just so happy. Jim! Jim, wait for me! No harm done. The whole June issue of Home Life magazine has just gone out that door. Now, wait a minute before you flip your lid. There's another angle to this. Angle, that's all you think about. I have five million readers waiting for the wedding of Jean and Bud. Suddenly, all I have left is an angle. Well, what are you going to do? Trying to persuade those two to be sensible, and I'd better succeed if you know what I mean. Well, I've got the dining room chandelier down, Linda. What'll I do? Oh, later, Scotty, later. Why haven't we heard from Carrie? He's probably dead. Why don't you turn your motor off for a while, Madam Editor? You've been going like this for three days now, ever since the kids walked out and disappeared. Oh, never a cent, Carrie. I should have kept on looking for them myself. In less than 24 hours, a wedding's supposed to take place in this house and in this room. Well, what are we going to tell Mama? Oh, she's not suspicious. Oh, no, she still thinks that Jean went to visit her out in Fort Wayne, but when Jean doesn't show up for the wedding... Ixnay, Ixnay. Um, anything wrong, Mrs. Brinker? 
Uh, I just wanted to ask if I could please have a cup of tea. Now, now, Mrs. Brinker, we've spent all week drying you out. You don't want to spoil your nice new figure, do you? <laughs> well, well, Mrs. Uh, Brinker, you're uh, looking very chic. I bet Mr. Brinker's so proud of you. Well, Fitman says he doesn't care if I'm chic or not, just as long as I've stopped screaming. <laughs> well, I think I'll just sit down and... Oh! Hold it, Mrs. Brinker. I better get some of the pins out of that dress first. Oh, my, all that sawing and pounding. Oh, they didn't really cut off the front porch, did they? Oh, it's not as bad as that. We just took off some of the scroll work. Oh, I'm glad. That's the only thing I wouldn't want. Linda, there's somebody here to see you at the back door. Oh, see who it is, will you, Paula? I think you'd better come, Linda. It's Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson, come back. Better close the door, Linda. Well, I uh, I found her all right, Jean and uh, Jim Mitchell. Where are they, Carrie? Indianapolis. What are they doing there? Well, the last time I saw them, uh, they were necking. Now, don't be funny. <laughs> Why didn't you stay with them? Well, I felt a little out of place on a honeymoon. You see, they uh, they're married. Married. Well, that does it. All right, Carrie, you'd better go inside and tell Mrs. Brinker. You're not going to go through with the story? Well, there isn't any story now, obviously. We'll be leaving here tomorrow afternoon. We'll do a quickie in New York, but I can't leave this house in this mess. Oh, now, wait a minute before you give up. I started this for a particular reason. I'm trying reason. to be very patient with you, Well, Carrie. thank you. But don't you think you're taking this thing a little too seriously? Seriously. I'm two days away from my deadline. We've already plated up six pages of picture, a thousand words of copy, and here I am without a story. Without a... You, you've got the best story of your life. A real story about human beings. And it isn't finished yet. But if you're girding up your loins to fire me, go ahead and fire me. Get oh, over with. Oh, that's your usual reaction to a crisis, isn't it? Simply walk away and let somebody else clean up the mess you've made. I'm just trying to get out of from underneath this labor versus management relationship of ours. Every time I get affectionate with you, I feel as though I were snuggling up to the Taft-Hartley bill. <laughs> well, you needn't be troubled by it any longer. You're, you, you're fired. Okay. Now, what about us? Everything's finished here, Carrie, including us. That's very easy for you, isn't it? A little soft music, a kiss or two, a wave of the hand, an exit, oh, Terry Jackson. I feel Jackson. so sorry for you, and you're so sweet and so patient and so utterly dependable. And here I am being cruel to you on the flimsy pretext that you've just ruined everything we've done here. Don't give me that. You're not firing me because Jean Brinker ran off with a man she should have married in the first place. It's because you're madly in love with me, and to you, that's you, a sign of weakness. You are incredible. <laughs> incredible. Perched up on that pinnacle of masculine ego, looking down at poor, weak, defenseless females and, and, and pitying them because they don't have beards. If you had a beard, I wouldn't look at you twice. Oh, <laughs> very amusing. And a typical male reaction to intellectual defeat. Me? Intellectually defeated? Oh, yes, oh. I've run into that attitude before. Every woman does the minute she starts to make a career for herself. Get back to the kitchen, Mother. It's a man's world. All I want to do is find out where I stand with you, and all of a sudden I'm knee-deep in a battle of the sexes. Listen, what is this? Right from the beginning, you've refused to follow instructions because I'm a woman and not to be taken seriously. This whole trip has been one big hilarious joke to you. Laughing gaily, all the while you've deliberately ruined the story we set out to do. You've got a darn good story here, only you're so mad you can't see it. Maybe I have been a little bit flippant, but that's the way I am. I can't go around bleeding from every pore just because things don't go just right. But there's always Berlin, you know. Yes, there is. I only took this job, poor deluded dope that I am, because it, it meant a great deal to me to be near you again. You have changed. Whatever else was wrong with you, you used to be honest. I came back looking for you. Well, the next time you can go and look for me. And one thing more. What? Give me back my cigar. <laughs> Bride, starring Irene Dunn as Linda Gilman and Fred McMurray as Carrie Jackson. <laughs> Linda Gilman's June Bride has turned into a January Bride, thanks, she believes, to Carrie Jackson. And her own romance with the ex-foreign correspondent is as cold as the Indiana countryside. In this moment of despair, Carrie has a visitor, the little fixer-upper, Boo Brinker. Do me a favor, Boo. Don't ever be a woman. You're still mad at me, aren't you? And Linda still thinks it was you who brought Jim Mitchell back. No, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about me. Oh, I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about Bud. He's coming over. Well, you told him about Jean, huh? What'd he say? He said, huh. Hmm. Evidently, it wasn't much of a blow to him. Oh, it was. I can tell from the way he said it. You're really in love with Bud, aren't you? But he doesn't like me. What makes you so sure? I can tell. How? The way he breathes. 
<laughs> I don't get it. Well, when he's around Jean, she always breathes like this. <laughs> but when he's around me, he doesn't breathe at all. You know why? Because he doesn't really think of you as an attractive woman. Why not? I haven't the faintest idea. Oh. Look, if we could only make Bud jealous. I mean, if... Well, if we could make him think that somebody, me, for instance, was madly in love with you. If... Look, will you go upstairs and tell Paula to give you that honeymoon dress that Jean was going to wear? And you put it on. But I can't. Bud's coming over. Well, that's just the point. Now, hurry. I'll keep him occupied till you're ready to come down. She, where's Boo? What'd she want? Sit down, Bud. Here, have a chair. Oh, no, no, better still, uh, have half a sofa. Bud, <laughs> you know, the minute I saw you, I said, there's a man of the world. You did? Yes. Naturally, when all this happened with Jean, I, I knew you'd take it well. I'm trying to, Mr. Jackson. I'm glad we could get together this way, old man. I've been wanting to ask your advice. Yeah? It's about Boo. Who? Boo. Do you think Boo could be interested in a man like me? Huh? I refer to marriage, of course. Boo? Boo. Since I've been here, I, I've become very fond of her. Boo? Boo. I must say, I, uh, I admire your ability to carry on a conversation with just a few simple little words. Well, a lot has happened to me today, Mr. Jackson. I just can't seem to catch up. Let me get this straight. You want to marry Boo? If she'll have me. But you're too old for her. She's just a kid. Oh, but Boo is blossoming. She's becoming a very attractive woman. I don't know whether you've ever noticed. That isn't the point. You just don't think of Boo as anybody's wife. You don't. I do. I can see her in a wedding dress right now. As a matter of fact, Boo, how nice you look. Thank you. Yeah. Swell. I can't tell you how sorry I am, Bud, about Jean. Oh, well, forget it. You have such a noble character. That dress is exquisite, dear. And so are you, dear. <laughs> oh, gee, Wilkins, Mr. Jackson, you're the only man I know that treats me like a woman. Well, that's because I know you have the makings of a first-class wife. Hey, now, wait a minute. What's on your mind, bud? You take your hands off of her. She's not your kind of girl. Well, whose kind of girl is she? I've watched Boo ever since she could walk. She doesn't need you. Well, this is still a free country, isn't it? How about a little kiss, baby? <gasps> what? Man, what a woman. I'll be seeing you, bud. <laughs> hey, what's been going on with you and him anyhow? Does your father know that a man that's practically old enough to be your mother is making passes at you? <laughs> Mr. Jackson's awfully nice, and he says the most exciting thing. Now, you listen to me, Boo Brinker. I don't like what's been going on around here, and I don't like... What's the matter? It's you. You look different. I do? I mean, do I? Yeah. A little bit as though you're kind of... Yeah, you sure do. Huh? You're blossoming. <laughs> you're becoming a very attractive girl. I am? <clears throat> uh, were, were you going to say something else? Uh, no. Oh. Hey, how come you're leaning on me? Is your back tired? I beg your pardon? I beg my pardon? <laughs> uh, boo... Uh, do you like me as much as you do, Mr. Jackson? More. Huh? I guess I always have. You're so strong. I am? Uh, <clears throat> uh Boo, I, I, I know I'm not much, but, well, we've always gotten along so well together and everything. Yes? What, I, what, what I'd what like to ask you is, will you marry me? No. Yeah, now, right away. Only after what's happened, after Jean and all, well, I don't blame you for saying no. Who said no? <laughs> you mean... Oh, swell. Swell. Why, Boo? Oh, what goes on here? Oh, Linda. Uh, we, well, uh, we're going to get married. And right away. If other people can get married, so can other people. Married? Ma you are? You, you won't change your mind? Oh, look, stay right here. Don't go away. For heaven's sake, don't move. Paula, Scott, Rosemary, come here quickly. Yeah. Scott, look, unpack everything. Huh? Set up your cameras. Paul, Rosemary, you help me tell Mrs. Brinker. Well, what's happened? The wedding is going to take place right on schedule, except that the bride is now boo. Who's the lucky man? Not that it matters. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Him? <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, 
May I come in? If you're concerned about the fact that I'm still in the house, Now, don't I... be silly. We're going through with our plans. There's going to be a wedding after all. Bud is going to marry Boo. Who? Boo. Boo. I thought you'd be surprised. Astounded. I'm, I'm astounded. All right. Now, now we can get back to work. You fired me, remember? Well, I'm unfiring you. Why? Oh, for heaven's sake, Carrie, we have a wedding to run off and not very much time to do it in, and, and I can't get another writer at this late date. Mm. Here, this is for you. What is it? Copy. A story. Pages. Oh, no, none of this is any good now. We'll have to get completely new material. How, um, oh, um, how Bud and Boo grew up together and how they discovered each other only because we came into their lives. That's the lead. Now, does that sound all right? Oh, yes, yes, very good. Fine, then you get started right away. It'll be here when you want it. My little boo getting married. Oh, I'm so nervous. Now, before you go downstairs, Mrs. Brinker, I want you to be sure you know just what to do. We're going to take pictures all during the ceremony, but now don't let that bother you. Just be natural. Are you sure I look all right? Oh, boo, you look lovely. I hope you'll be very happy. Thank you. My baby, my little boo. Oh, there's the wedding march. Your cue to go down, Mrs. Brinker. Oh, don't cry, Mama. I'm just getting married. Now, after the ceremony, Boo, remember you and Bud are in the reception line. Oh, we'll be there. And just be sure to speak all the names loudly and clearly so that Mr. Jackson can take them down for the picture caption. Mr. Jackson? Oh, but he isn't here. What do you mean, isn't here? I guess you've been too busy to notice he left last night. Left? Stephen called me from New York this morning to wish me good luck. You didn't know? Oh, well, this is, this is hardly your problem. Good luck, Boo. You can take her downstairs now, Mr. Brinker. Hold oh, a matter, Minister. I want a picture oh, of Boo, you. Oh, get downstairs, Scott, where you belong. What's the matter with you? Carrie's left, walked out without finishing the story. Where did he go? New York. Let's face it, we haven't any story. Well, he left the copy. I have it right here. No, no, that's the old stuff on G. But I just read it. It's all about Boo. About Boo? Let me see. Then he knew. All the time. Before I did. Well, this is the whole story. I don't get it. Oh, it's very simple. Terribly simple. I, I've just been an absolute idiot. If you're looking for an argument, you've got to pick another subject. Well, we don't want to miss Boo's... Why, well, Linda, you're crying. I'm not crying. It's not dignified. By all means, keep your dignity, Madam Editor. Personally, on these cold, wintry nights, I like a nice, warm back to put my feet on. Shall we go down? Yes. Well, Linda, I guess this finishes it. The June issue, all ready to go to press. Any idea what we'll do for July? Oh, something rare, rich and novel. Probably with firecrackers in it. Same writer. Oh, by the way, he called my office this afternoon. Gary? Oh, what, what, what was he calling about? This check. Oh. Well, I'll be inside with the boss. Come in, Linda, come in. And what is that untidy object you're clutching? Our June issue, Carlton. Dummy copy. I'll need your okay before it goes to print it. Sit down. And, Carlton, you... You have three months in which to find a new editor for home life. Resigning? You? Yes, well, if you've had a better offer, I'm sure we no, can... No, no, it's, it's, it's just that I'm I'm tired of being a, a brick wall covered with roses. From now on, it's lavender and old lace for Linda Gilman. With slippers and a pipe for Carrie Jackson? Mm-hmm. If I can find him. I take it he's not aware of the, uh, the bliss in store for him. No. Have you seen him? Uh-huh. Has he been in? Constantly. Personally, I think he's just been waiting for you to come back. Oh, yes. I can imagine. Well, why don't you ask him? Go on. Open that door. Trying to tell me that Carrie... Then I'll open the door. Hi. Oh, Carrie. Yeah? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Carrie. I was all wrong about you. You always have been. I only have two more issues to get out, and I'll be... I'll be... Free after that. Oh, good. You need a rest. I was thinking maybe next month we could do the story of Jean and Jim, the newlyweds in Chicago. Oh, well, have a good time. Oh, no, I'm not all of us. No, no. No, not me. I'll be doing something else. I'm, uh, I'm leaving. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I just stopped by now to say goodbye to Carlton. See, uh, my suitcase is over there. It was a beautiful wedding, Carrie. 
Everyone was very happy. Except me. I cried. I cried for a long time. I haven't done that in years. Uh, that was uh, probably hay fever. Oh, Carrie, don't, don't make jokes. Don't shut me out. Now, what do you expect? You've been dangling me like a yo-yo all week. Go away, Carrie. Come back, Carrie. I never know whether you're going to kiss me or kick me. You want me to tell you? Now, don't get provocative. And stop turning off the lights. We've been all through that. Carrie, you know very well we're perfectly mated. After all, we're of opposite sexes. Perhaps you remember a conversation we had about growing roses on Sunday versus carrying these suitcases all over Europe? It's become a very simple, old-fashioned question of who wears the pants. And I'd look pretty silly without them. Oh, Carrie, wait. Wait. Well? You forgot your suitcases. Uh, I'll carry them. Where to? Berlin? Uh-huh. Afghanistan? Uh-huh. Belukistan? Uh-huh. Madagascar? Anywhere. Sir... Please step forward for a well-deserved custom call.